I think it's great that, you know, when given a platform, what are you casting? Knowledge? Yeah. Are you casting spells that are going to affect people in a, in a not so good way? And that comes down to like music and, you know, platforms. Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Empire, where we like to engage with everyone from pastors to actors, rappers to trappers, and everybody in between. And yes, we have another great guest for today. My name is Antonio D. Miles. I'm your host for today. And uh, you know the usual, you know, like the video, subscribe. You know, we're doing great work out here, helping the community, getting through the community, learning about people in the community, outside the community further. And it's just been a beautiful time, and I've been loving it. Hopefully, you guys have been loving it as well. And uh, other than that, let's just get right into our amazing and esteemed guest, CEO and founder, can I say that? Yes. <laughs> of uh, an amazing establishment that primarily deals with hair, but we're going to let her talk more about it. Mm. And Miss Amanda, welcome to the pod. Thank you so much for having me, Antonio. I'm uh, excited to be here. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we talked a little bit earlier off, and, you know, you said uh, you got a little massage before you came. Yes. So you're a little bit relaxed? Yes. Got you. <laughs> Not too tense? Uh, no, I'm working it out. A little bit? Okay. <laughs> you need to get, you know. I feel my, my hands here. I like, know, right? It's like very, uh... <laughs> choking the microphone stands. Like, uh. <laughs> This is my friend. <laughs> that part's like, it's, keep me close. Yes. Don't, don't mess with me. Uh, so, um, you know, what time, what time did your day start today? My first alarm went off at 4.44. Okay. Oh, so you have a... Yeah. I like to prolong it a little bit and see how I feel. Listen okay. Listen to my body and see, like, my intention is to get up at 4, uh, 44, um, but then I might press news or put it till 5, and then if I feel good from there, then I'll get up and I'll stretch or I'll start whatever it is that I intend to do. And today was to rest a little bit longer. Okay. And then get up and head out for my beautiful massage. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Is it always, it's 4.44 every morning? No, that's just what it's been this week. That's okay. what it's been the last couple of days. Okay. Because uh, my husband and I get up on Mondays at that time um, for some other work that we do. Okay. And so we just recognize how our day begins and how we feel energetically and where we feel at, like when we are up at that time. Yeah. And so, yeah, just working on like when it's not for work, how do I work for myself? How do mm. I give to myself? Treat so, yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Facts. You know, it's interesting because you realize when you get up early and you're doing like work early, mm -hmm. like you get so much done and you still have so much of the day left. Absolutely. That's the crazy, that's the yeah. cool part I like about yeah. it. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And, um, you know, it's, you said 444, right? Mm-hmm. So I immediately thought of Jay-Z's album. Oh, okay. Is there a reason why you guys chose the number 444 instead no, of 4.30? No, I mean, he, he, yeah, my husband might get up at 4.30 or 4.45 or something, but okay. I just, like, I guess, like, you know, on your iPhone when you set your alarm and you can kind of scroll the time gotcha. instead of, like, typing it in, I was like, well, we'll just leave it at 44 instead of... <laughs> okay, it was like, ah. <laughs> Instead of 45, this is good, yeah, so... We'll live with it. We'll just make it work. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. um, you know, for people who don't know who you are... Amanda, can you please tell all of us who you are and what you do? Sure. So I am a licensed cosmetologist. Well, my name's uh, Amanda or Amanda Jade. Um, and I have been a licensed cosmetologist since 2009. And um, in that work, a lot has evolved within myself and then in my work itself. So I have a space in San Bernardino, um, down the street from the Garcia Center. Mm -hmm. And um, we have haircutting there that I offer. And I do everything from um, barber cuts, like clipper, fades, tapers, afros, um, everything. And then um, straight hair as well, all textures. Mm -hmm. And um, I specialize in curly cuts. And I was really excited about bringing that here or establishing myself in the Inland Empire because I'm from the Inland Empire. Mm -hmm. And I grew up um, out here since I was 12. And so um, I also felt like it was really important to um, bring in community work. And by doing that, it can also be by being an example. And so if I felt like mm -hmm. I had something of value to keep what is valuable here and allow other people to bring 
their presence into our space as opposed to us always moving to Los Angeles or something uh-huh. like that. So in my space, we do um, crochet circles every other Wednesday. And so it's a space for community to come and gather and to connect to ancestral medicine through weaving our prayers and um, our thoughts, our emotions and all of those things. Okay. And, um, and then we hold a sacred circle for folks to be able to share and to be seen and to be heard. Um, and so that has its own healing in itself. And so the space is just evolving a little bit more and um, it holds everything from that healing vibration to plant medicine in there it's just surrounded by plants natural lighting Um, it's really just a holistic space for people to check out from their everyday life to check in with themselves especially while sitting in front of the mirror Mm -hmm. um, because we can't lie to ourselves sometimes we can lie to other people but we can't lie to ourselves so being able to have also um tools, not just to have people walk into a vibration, but also to have the tools to take home with them so they can work on themselves continuously and really see the change in a positive way, even if it could be difficult. Awesome. Super cool. You know, and um, I'm assuming that it's probably evolved from what you never imagined it was going to, when you started probably, I'm assuming. Yes, absolutely. Right. And it's probably been like a joy watching it. Uh, um, You know, you mentioned uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you mentioned it on now or earlier, but I think you mentioned that you're married. Yes. Right. And I think I saw a video of I think the family. Someone was bu- was that your oh. husband buffering the floor? Yes. Right. Uh-huh. I was like, shout out to you, hubby, yes. for for helping uh, clean up the space like that. Yeah. And um, you mentioned that you know we we lie to people will lie to others or we can lie to others, right? Um, but I also actually think that a lot of the times a lot of people lie to themselves. Mm-hmm. You know. And it could be whether it's good or bad, you mm-hmm. know, maybe like I'm ugly, but truly you, you might be beautiful inside mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I definitely will definitely get deeper into that about the before and after stuff mm-hmm. that you have, you know, with your paintings. I mean, not your paintings. Yeah. Well, basically, I guess you are painting as people are canvases and you're right. painting them to sure. show their true colors, right? Yeah. What they are. Um, Amanda Jade, can you give us like a brief synopsis of how you grew up? how a life was and to the point to where you are today. Sure. Um, So I grew up a middle child with uh, two sisters and a brother. Okay, okay. (laughs) Uh, Always talking Mm -hmm. and always, yeah, always in trouble in school for for that talking and um, very disciplined and, you know, religious upbringing and things like that. like Catholic? Catholic. Okay. Uh-huh. So a lot of like guilt right off the bat, okay. even though like my parents didn't put too much on there. Um, but I think just like being in those institutions, in those spaces and feeling like everything I do is bad. Gotcha. And so I grew gotcha. up a lot um, with that energy of feeling like, you know, um, like don't do anything because if you do, you're going to be drawing attention to yourself and you better make sure it's the right attention. Okay. And so... Um, I think I've always been looking for a piece of myself somewhere um, through my family, through history of my family, my lineage, and mm-hmm. trying to see like where it is that I fit in. And um, and yeah, I think a lot of what I connected to was like plant medicine. And so around 25, I started to do a whole lot more of that work, that okay. internal work. And in doing so, that's what led me to everything that I do today. So, okay. Yeah. All right. And you grew up in the IE? I did partially also okay. in the South Bay area, Los Angeles County um, okay. until I was 12. But like all my family's from like Lawndale, Hawthorne, Gardena, Carson. So we that grew area. up, my dad was born in East LA. Okay. And so, um, but they moved out here because it was, uh, you know, just more affordable and yeah. uh, less people, less things, just more nature, which I was really True. grateful for because. Uh, we have the mountains and we have, you know, all the trees out here and things like that. So at 12, yeah. we moved out here. Uh, well, we moved out to Fontana and um, and then I just grew up all throughout San Bernardino County and okay. different places. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. ¿Habla español? Poquito. Poquito? Uh-huh. <laughs> Me entiende poquito. Ajá, uh-huh. okay. Está bien, está bien. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I wanted to get into the name yes. of the brand. Yes. Keep your crown right, correct? Yes, correct. How did the name come about? Why the name? Let's talk about it. Yeah. So in doing hair, I started, well, and when I turned 29, a lot of things were happening inside of myself and in, in, um, attending different ceremonies and different um, 
different cleansings and different yeah ceremonies within myself. And so in there, I was just like, what am I supposed to offer to hair? What is my purpose here? What am I supposed to give? Can I, you elaborate or can you kind of give us a detail what you mean by when you say ceremonies? Um, like like limpias or sweat lodge, uh, the mezcali. Um, those are different ceremonies that we connect with all of our relations and to creator and to mother earth. And so, um, going in and purifying through, um, word, through song, through okay. doing our talking and prayers with, with the sacred smoke, with the water, with the earth, all okay. of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Reconnecting to ancestral medicine, things that my ancestors had done before me, but okay. Fall, fell off, you know? So in that time, I was just, again, like I said, when I was younger, just seeking parts of myself and like, what am I supposed to be doing? Like feeling like there's just always this little pain inside mm. my heart to, to, to just love myself and, and to allow others to see that in a safe space. So with Keep Your Crown Right, I was doing hair and I was like, what am I supposed to offer more to people? And then I started to think about like, what does this space actually mean? What is this space that I'm working on. And in some cultures, it's a world, you know, the, the thought, the mind is a world. And so mm -hmm. when I'm working on someone's head or anybody who works so intimately with people in their hair or facials or things like that, we're tapping into someone's world. And also because our hands are an exchange of energy, we're also letting them into ours or exchanging it, right? Mm -hmm. And so then um, it was like that this is a very sacred space. And then I started to research a little bit more and be like, what what is this space? And across many different traditions in uh, the Mexica tradition, it might be um, known as your tonali, your connection to creator, your sacred space. And mm -hmm. the um, Yoruba tradition, it might be called the ori, right? And Hawaiian culture might be called the pico po'o. And so there's all these... Um, traditions you see all over the world, whether it's growing your hair out long or cutting it all off to be yeah. connected to creator and to earth. And so then I was like, mm. and I was talking like, this is a sacred space. This is a sacred space. You want to keep this space. And I, I don't remember who it was, but somebody's like, yeah, like your crown, you got to keep it right. Right. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's, mm -hmm. that's the name. That's the oh. name. Keep your crown right. I'm taking that. that was it. And mm -hmm. that was it after that. And it was just like, yeah, to keep keep this space right and what is right, like righteous or, you know, in a, in a, not necessarily right, but like in a, in a good way, right. To keep yeah. it in a good way. So basically the name was brought by someone else and you're like, mm -hmm. I like it. It probably happened to so many people. I know that's happened to mm -hmm. so many people around the world. You know, I think you kind of explained it, but I'm going to have to ask again. Yeah. Um, what does hair mean to you? Yeah. For me, it's a connection to my ancestors. It's also a space that, uh, well, the hair, it's how I identify myself, how I express myself. Um, it's so many different things, you know, it's mm -hmm. like so many memories, whether it's like picking up my niece or my nephew or my daughter and having them like twirl my hair in their hands, you know, or if it's my, my husband, you know, caressing my face and my head. And okay. so there's so much um, beauty in that. And for people also, there's a lot of pain in it. And so, um, can you explain that pain in the hair? Yeah. yeah maybe not that? a physical, some people, yeah, they do have physical, like they're like, I could feel it when I cut my hair. It feels like there's a feeling there might be that sensitive, but throughout history, we've seen how hair has been a way to dehumanize people, um, through yeah. colonization, yeah. through slavery, the Holocaust, um, it's a way to make people submissive because it is our identity. It is our strength. It is our power, you know, um, because it is that sacred space and our head is, if born, um, you know, uh, vaginally or however folks come through, yeah. most of the time it might be um, the head first, right? And yeah, so yeah, it's a very sacred space and also there's so many different um views around not letting people touch your hair um, because it is sure. your energy and not yeah. letting your hair in the wrong hands. Um, and so for me, yeah, it's a tie to my, um, my ancestors and to my thoughts and to my power, my personal power. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because, or maybe it's just funny to me because you're like, you know, if they're born vaginally or somewhere else, I'm like, is there other ways they could be born yeah. besides C-section? I was like, <laughs> What does what she know that I don't know? What other, <laughs> what other ways can they be born? Um, you know, I, I agree. I think there's power in hair. Apparently, some people say that it holds like 
memory, like some of the hair would hold memory in it. Mm-hmm. Have so you heard something like that? Scientifically, it's yeah. an extension of our nervous system and sends signals to mm. parts of our brain that are associated with our thoughts and emotions and memories like the limbic system and the neocortex. Um, so Ooh. that's why you see people when they have some um, traumatic experiences, they might want to cut all of their hair off to release that energy, to release that memory. Um or they might have had a beautiful experience and now they want to cut their hair because it is so sacred to them, but they want to make an offering. They want to give a piece of themselves for all that they have been, you know, given. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which is wild because, wow, there's so many different ways I want to go with it, but I'll, I'll kind of, I'll just stick on this path, which is, you know, when, when people come to you, come to your, your establishment, do people normally request certain things to be done like i'm certain you have you know a menu of what you offer obviously Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or just people just sit down and say amanda do what you want some of both a little bit of both as far as like style people are like these are my ideas and what do you think best fits my face or according to my lifestyle what would you suggest and then some people are like i trust you i've been coming to you for a long time just do whatever looks good i just want to keep this Mm -hmm. amount this amount of length people will say cut my hair based on my lifestyle can you give us an example? So if they have work and they or they have children and they need to have the, be able to pull their hair back and put it in a ponytail like I have it right now, they might not want very short layers or something that they're not going to be able to maintain. Yeah. Uh, if they don't have a lot of time, maybe they don't want a high maintenance cut. They want something that's going to look really good when it dries naturally without any effort. Okay. Yeah, I immediately thought of like a businesswoman or something like that, you know, when you said... My lifestyle, I guess, and that's more of a career, I guess. Uh-huh. But a parent, you're talking about, right? All, even yeah. some some careers, you know, like um, their work. They or some people are like, I have to wear a hard hat, so I have to have it short, mm. even though they might want to have it long. So it's from everyone in every way, I guess. Gotcha. I wonder. Mm-hmm. It would be nice if someone came. They're like, Hey, Amanda, I'm gonna live in the forest. Give me a cut for the. For- I'm gonna live in the forest. I mean, I'd be like, I don't know. What does that feel like to you? <laughs> okay. And like, then we'd go from there. It's like Paul Bunyan. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't know who, what he looks like. Okay, um, uh, <laughs> Bring a photo and we'll talk about it. You know, Grizzly Adams. <laughs> so if somebody is going to go somewhere and they're going to be out for a long time and they want to have the process of their hair growing in, then I'd suggest taking it pretty short so they can have it grow out in a way that's going to be good for them. So maybe they're like, I'm going to be in the forest for six months. Cool. We'll take you really low here along the sides where it has a tendency to grow out really quick. Uh huh. And then, you know, it's just like, how long do you plan on going between your cuts? Do you want to be here every week? Then we can leave you a little longer because, you know, you're going to be coming more frequently. Or if you know you're going to come every three months, then, you know, these are your options. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. You know, and I I saw that you had a a thing on the menu, which is like... um, like a meditation shampoo? Yes. Can you explain that? Yeah. So um, I have a little space and um, the space itself, Keep Your Crown Right Salon, um, yeah. is a pretty large space. But one of the things that I envisioned when I was opening my, my salon was to have a room that was specifically for shampoo. So in that space, I have Himalayan salt crystals. And the, I'm just like a little mom and pop spot. So it still has so much room to evolve. But okay. the essence of it is what's very potent. Yeah. And Almost so, where you make it. It, it, yes, yes. And it, it is beautiful. And yeah. so I have these little Himalayan salt crystals in there. And this is even if somebody isn't getting the um, meditation shampoo, this is just what it is. Okay. Because it's a feeling when you go in there. And so when we go to the shampoo area, I call that room the womb. Um, okay. Because our first nine months of life, we're in the sacred water. And so okay. we forget that we have the ability to connect with the water in our own home, in our own space. Um, and so it's a reminder for folks just hearing and being like in a dark space, a warm, dark space, right? Like, okay. like the lighting is very warm. So it's like, oh, this is very relaxing. People will fall asleep. Oh, so it's low lighting um, in there. It's low lighting and the acoustics are very beautiful so I play meditative um, 
music okay running water different different whatever my i'm feeling called to i might be on one soundtrack for like a month and then i'm like oh i'm switching it up i like this one better i feel relaxed because it becomes Mm -hmm. a dance now okay it becomes an exchange so um if somebody's coming for a meditation then i will walk them through a meditation i will fall asleep in like your arms not like, in my arms. I'm not I mean, holding not, them. I'm like, you know, in your hands, you're like <laughs> no. It's like oh. uh, like there was a yes. People fall asleep, which is very beautiful, and I'm very honored yeah. um, because that's a time some people don't know what that is like. That type of rest. Okay. And I've worked on elders. Um, like I've had clients, and then they bring like their parents, mm-hmm. and I've had them. Like uh, one lady was walking down the street, and she like came and put her hand and looked into my window, and I opened the door like hi how you doing? Yeah. I gave her my card and she was a nurse. She was just on a walk and she's like, Oh, I want to come and get my hair shampooed. And so I was like, cool, come through. So we booked her an appointment. She came, she fell asleep. She had just got off of work. Mm. And I, it, I, that wasn't a meditation. You know, I just, she just fell asleep. And then I'm like, I usually will walk them through waking back up or if it's a whole meditation, bringing themselves back into the space, back into their body. Um, and she didn't wake up. She was just like still out. I was like, taking three deep breaths and okay. like, and then I'm like, ma'am, and just gently, you know, tap yeah. her or place my hand on her. She was like, ow, ow. So people, yeah, it's like, also my space, I, it's for everybody, but who I specifically have my intention towards is for, um, black, brown people of color, okay. um, indigenous people, all people, um, who identify as such. And, um, when we think about our ancestors or we think about our parents, right. I think about my own parents, like, they didn't have the time or the luxury to experience what it's like. Cause you're not just like shampooing like this with your feet down, you know, like the chair I want is like 20 G's and I just don't have that. But okay. the one that I have, we're going to make it work. So hey, we the put 20 our G's feet is coming. That, that chair is coming. It's that coming. chair is coming. It is. And who benefits? Thank you. We it's call coming. it in. We it's align coming. it. It's so coming. it is. And, and what, um, we do is we, again, with that essence. So to think about like, I've cried working on older folks where they're like, so moved because they've never had their feet kicked up. They've been working their whole life that they don't know what that feels like, that that was their first time feeling like that. Or it brings a a remembrance of their grandmother washing their hair or their mother or a family uh, member who um, did something so gently. And again, on the other side is some people have had very traumatic experiences growing up or told very bad things about them, uh, um, themselves, about their hair or the way they look mm. and just how much time it requires and things. And so it's like, no, we're not, you're not going to get any like complaining over here about, you know, who you are, how you are. It's a beautiful space to be, you know. And take everybody in. Take everybody in. I love that. You know, it made me think immediately because, you know, you know, the old school thing is like, you know, you go to the barber and it's like your place to vent. Like, I always feel like, um, in my opinion, when people start messing with your hair, that's when people start vocalizing. Like, it's like therapy for a lot mm-hmm. of people, right? Mm-hmm. Not only are you probably dealing with their most, one of their most sacred places of their body, um, but they're also comfortable enough to start expressing like their true deep desires, mm-hmm. disappointments, mm-hmm. fears. Mm-hmm. Has that stuff like that happened to you since sure. you've been in this? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So also knowing how to receive that, how to have a container to hear somebody, how to have the capacity to be present and to have something good. And that's why it's really important for people who are in my position of, you know, beauty grooming professionals mm-hmm. to make sure there's a responsibility within ourselves. There's a responsibility within ourselves uh-huh. to make sure we're in a good space to know when we have the capacity or when we don't. Um, because yeah, people are coming to us. And so if you're not in a good space, you might be like, you know, I don't, I don't know if you cuss on here, but somebody might yeah, say something. Go ahead, okay, you no, cuss, no, yeah, just somebody yeah. might be like, man, fuck, fuck that, blah, blah, blah. Or give yeah. like, you know, just something because their spirit is not right. Their spirit is not in a good space. So they're going to give you something and, or they might be upset cutting or cutting hair and just had a bad day and they don't know how to check out from that space mm-hmm. to be present here. So now again, like I said before, we're exchanging energy. Yeah. People are in my heart space. So I also have to know how to block that, let them, but know how to keep my own boundary with my own energy and be able to 
allow them to process that there and leave that there. Mm. It's like you're doing two jobs, your therapy and your... And I'm not a licensed clinician, but right. yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm like, like, I'm not a licensed... But yeah, in and, yeah. and, and, and the walk that I... That's how it led me to the medicine, to curanderismo, which is Mexican folk healing. And so things that my ancestors, ancestors did um, and that I'm reconnecting with because it's... Um, it's called a platica. Like we have heart to heart conversations and people are in here letting their whole heart out. Um, and I'm there to help, you know, them look at it and sew it up and send them out the way feeling refreshed and, okay. you know, just feeling good about themselves. And the hair is the icing on the cake. Okay. And I can't, I'm not saying I, I heal or do anything like that. Um, but that is a medicine for people to do their own healing for them to be able to have all the answers and understand that they do and then find the tools how to, to connect with it. Can you talk to us a little bit about the process of, I'm not even going to say the word because I know it's, I'm going to butcher it, uh-huh. but the, 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 the tradition the that you're going to have, uh-huh. the folk healing. Can you talk uh-huh. to us a little bit about it? Sure. Um, so it's a connection where we work with, and I'm still a student. Um, okay. So I never claim to be something I'm not. Gotcha. So you're studying with somebody. I'm studying. Well, yes, I've, I'm in the process still. I was working with the maestra, maestra Kuali Siwat, maestra oh. Sisi. Love to her. Shout maestra, out to yes, you. Yes, she's transitioned a few years ago. Okay. And so I still work with her um, teachings and the teachings of her, Abuelita Casimira Rocha y Sanchez. Okay. And we carry the... Um, her lineage of medicine, which is from the Tezcatlipoca tradition of the Red Path and Eagle Clan. Okay, is and it all written down? Is that what it is? That's that's what it is. Yeah. Oh. I mean, some of it is. Okay. Some of it. Some things are, we learn from her students who are now our maestra, maestro, maestra, okay. Paula, maestro di Santi. And so all, all of these teachings were um, oral traditions. Of course. That's how course. it traditionally is. Yeah. And so... Um, the way of the medicine is to walk the medicine. You can have all kinds of books and things, but it's until you live it and walk it authentically yeah. that you really see it happen day to day. So some of like what I walk, I might not be knowing I'm doing the medicine. It was like, I have the teachings. I'm like, ah, oh, I've been doing that. Like, I'm so grateful for myself to mm-hmm. creator that I've been doing this even like before I went to the sweat lodge and things, right? Like, and I went and I'd hear the elder say something and I'm like, ah, oh, I feel, I think that way, like that's okay. just confirmation. And I feel like a lot of it. So we work with creator, um, with the most high, however way you choose yeah. to see it. And we're just a support system. So there's the creator, the the client, the person we're seeing, um, the patient, and then, um, myself. And as a team, we work with all of our ancestors and we ask the, the good ones to come forth and okay. we work with the medicine and we put intention to recall the spirit because a lot of us have been through that trauma that maybe you've seen a, com- a cartoon where there's like somebody gets scared and their little spirit comes out of their body. Okay. Right. And then it goes back. Well, mm-hmm. sometimes it doesn't come back. Sometimes it's floating in an area that you had a traumatic experience. And so we work to bring the spirit back to the body and we work by letting um, that spirit know that this is a safe space, that our body here in this time is a safe space to be. And so we work with all of our relations and what that means is everything that that the creator made in a good way, yes. respectfully, um, in, a, in a good way. And we ask permission from, from those gifts, from the plants, from the eggs, from the water, from the fire, mm-hmm. from the earth. And there's a lot of different ways you can go about cleansing your auric field, your spiritual body, um, because, you know, we have this whole field around us and, True. you know, we aren't like how it used to be, where we used to be, you know, um, on our farm or wherever, just you mm-hmm. could smell somebody coming, you know, five <laughs> miles away. Yeah, they so weren't bathing, that's somebody, for sure. <laughs> somebody's coming, right? That's Ralph and, over there. I smell. <laughs> and you knew somebody was coming. Yeah. And now we're at the grocery store. We're um, in an airplane and we're mixing and mingling all of our energy. So sometimes if you're open, you can hold on to somebody else's stuff that's not yours. Mm-hmm. And so it doesn't, we don't call it bad or good. We just, it's not yours. It's not yours to mm-hmm. carry. And so we work um, to cleanse. And so, like I said, there's really in-depth things. Um, and sure. I'm just a little baby in it. But um, yeah, hey. so that's that's pretty much it. We and you're going to continue sticking with it, huh? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, you mentioned about the calling for good spirits to come. Yes. You know, uh, is there... 
ever a concern that, because can we both agree that spirits are alive? Uh huh. Right? Um, is there a such thing as spirits trying, trying to be deceptive and trying to pretend that they're good, but they're not? Have you ever thought about anything like that? Sure. Um, I don't necessarily ask or connect with those spirits um, because I don't have those gifts per se. To There are some folks who can see spirit, can hear. Um, and when I ask for, I think creator knows. And so we always just ask the creators of good, I mean, the, the ancestors of uh, our honorable ancestors. Yeah. Like in those who are not, we have the faith that they stay back. And that's where we put in our protection. And we ask those guys to be with us. And we also make offerings. I know some people make offerings for the spirits of lower vibration to remain on the outside. We okay. humbly ask them yeah. to stay on the outside. So we make offerings in that way too. At least I do. Um, and again, these are just what I know now. And it's always evolving. And there's somebody who can enlighten me in a whole new way. So I don't act like I... I um, know it and you do have to be mindful with those energies and yeah um i've had that's a huge question for us right and we've had a maestro uh maestro laurencio from, um and he's said uh that's why you have to be very honest with yourself in this work because you can hurt yourself or hurt other people if you're not and mm -hmm. so it's definitely not an ego thing it's not just to say you do something to say you do it. Yeah. Um, it's because it's like this is coming for you, um, this calling, and it's yours and it's your birthright. And actually, we're asking you to take responsibility and step forward to it. Um, yeah. And some people, they're like, ah, they've run from that responsibility, but it's their gift to help people in that way. And so True. we're learning to protect ourselves and to... Um, yeah, to if we if that comes up and those deceitful energies and deceitful energies can be walking around anywhere through any of these books or yeah, through anything, it's, right? It's everywhere, yeah. And so There's it's like war. how how that's why it's important when you get up every day if it's four forty four, you know, do you give your thanks? Do you give you know connection to your body? Do you give thanks mm -hmm. for your breath? How do you give vitality to yourself and strength to endure mm -hmm. whoever or whatever you may come across your day? That's why having True. a healthy um, spiritual hygiene is important. And something to learn. Some of us don't know how to do that. That's why I am interested in that work because nobody taught me how to do these things. And yeah. so how can I learn so I can be in a good way because I am working on so many people. So. True, yeah. And you, you, know, you mentioned when you do the shampoo meditation that you bring people back to their body. Mm hmm can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. So when we start, we start with like visual. Is it trans I'm sorry. Is it a transcendental meditation? I mean, do, I, do you it's know just, what that means? Yeah. Like where you can transcend into different spaces or yeah, in, you outside of your body. Yeah. Outside of your body. Mm -hmm. Some people do. That's That might be their gift. Not everybody mm -hmm. does that. Right. And so when we start, I just ask to have them visualize themselves being grounded and I'll walk them through that process of what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And then, then ask them to open themselves up in a good way, you know, and we call upon whatever's going on in the body and we address it and ask it to come out through the water and through all that stuff okay. throughout their body. You wouldn't have to use water. You could just do it visually as well. Yeah. But after when I'm, I ask them to take a couple deep breaths to, because if that's that person's ability at that time, they might drift off and fall asleep and be like, I was somewhere. Mm -hmm. I just was here and I was on the beach or I saw again, my grandma or somebody or, okay. you know, and so mm -hmm. we want them to be present because I don't want to leave them out there. So they have to take a couple deep breaths, <sighs> bring themselves back into their body. Yeah. Gently wiggling their fingers and toes, batting their eyes open, okay. taking note of how their body feels, feeling held by that chair in that very moment. Yeah. Um, a and slow what transition. came up from them. Yeah. And okay. so that way they can come back and be like, oh, I am here presently, you okay. know? So then I ask them how they're doing. And so it just depends. Like, again, I have different tools that I work with. So I have chimes that um, I end the, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> no, it's okay. You're fine. Sorry, uh, real life stuff. You can battle but, uh, if you need to. Whatever. That's also energy, right? <sighs> energy passes through yeah. different burps or through different ways people trans transmute energy in different yeah. ways. Um, that's one way that I might be working with somebody and talking about their stuff, and then I might start burping and expelling that 
energy. Okay. Um, so um, farts too must count. Probably no. Too. Yeah, there are people who do, and okay. there are people who, after like a heavy cleansing, have to use the restroom because some people do take on people's shit, like mm-hmm. not physical shit, but their emotional shit. Okay. There's stuff that's lingering, and so when you're working as a conduit for creator, uh huh, you're channeling and pushing out and transmuting, not from your own, because I'm not taking anybody's stuff. There are some people who will suck out people's like energy, like they will spit it out and do things. There are so many different traditions and ways to do it. Mm. Um, but yeah, Gnarly. so that's why you got to keep your Gnarly. spiritual hygiene good and in hey. a good way. So I just have them, I work with the chimes sometimes and they're um, attuned to the natural rhythms and the earth, the fire, air, water. And okay. so that sound also will bring you back. Chimes, bells, things like that. Got you. Sound is very powerful. Sound mm-hmm. and breath. Mm-hmm. It's very powerful in this, I can tell, in the water. Mm-hmm. Uh, protect yourself, people. Protect yes. yourselves. Yes. Um, you know, can you tell when someone's hair is damaged or healthy? Can you tell off sure. the bat? Um Yes, if they have curly hair, you can tell um, by looking at it because the strands might be straight or wavy, a different texture mm-hmm. than white, what might be closer to their scalp where it's like the new growth. Mm-hmm. Um, and same with straight hair, you can see the change in color. Um, uh-huh. It will be richer at the base and then duller at the ends. And that could be from swimming. Um, my, mm-hmm. my husband has locks and yeah. his hair is darker at the root. And because he may not get in all the way, but... At the ends, you know, they're like turning blonde a little bit. So, at the ends, they're turning blonde? Yeah. It's like a light brown blonde on the ends okay. from the chlorine from always sitting, right? So, oh. that also is like taking that. So, um, yeah, you can tell. And usually it's just the way that it feels and the way that it looks mostly. And what about healthy hair? Healthy hair has a shine, it's well hydrated. Okay. If it's curls, it'll be very bouncy. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Like to okay. the feel. Mm-hmm. Most people just need hydration, like water, uh, a good routine with shampooing their hair and um, good product that isn't going to have heavy oils or butters. Got you. Mm-hmm. Paraffin, 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 <laughs> paraffin. Um, can, what do you think is like one of the most common things for like people damaging their hair? Would you say like dying? Is one of dying, the most but uh, yes, if they're using bleach. Okay. Um, but mostly um, thermal heat. Thermal heat, like mm-hmm. straightening, gotcha. curling, things like that. Someone in the background dragging <laughs> like a <laughs> toolbox or something out there. I don't know what the hell is going on out it's there. It's lively here. <laughs> He's lively. definitely doing something. <laughs> shout out to the Garcia Center. <laughs> shout out to the Garcia Center for sure. But that's like dragging like a box of chains or something in the background. Uh huh. Um, so dying, uh, so um, if it's got like bleach in it, you're saying could be one of the damaging things. Yes. Stuff like that. It just, yeah, it's, it's usually over-processed. Because mm. mm-hmm. I notice like a lot of people, like they'll dye their hair and some people, you know, I know they, or even like they'll perm their hair so much or constantly doing so much like things to their hair that over time... The hair doesn't want to grow back. Sure. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've dyed my hair for many years and I feel like that might be possibly some stuff that's going on with me. But also, um, you know, there aren't more quote unquote natural um, colors out there that are organic. But at the same time, they still have to lift the cuticle and Mm. penetrate the cortex and alter the pH of the scalp and the hair. And so, but there are some more damaging things that it goes into your bloodstream. You know, like I even, I, 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 I'm even, I even struggle with my own self, you know, with coloring my hair. I'll go and let it, you can see my grays, my silvers and I'll let them come in or I'll let them go. Or it just depends on how I'm feeling. Um, Same thing with makeup, you know, this eyeliner, it's it's a uh, vegan and i try to get plant-based and things like that but yeah. um you know i try to be very mindful like the products that i use are organic uh, plant-based products and working towards finding some that are fragrant free because you know some it just depends on people's lifestyle and it's what true. they care about and uh i care about those things for myself so it is a struggle when trying to find ways to express yourself and okay. making sure it's not toxic to your body that part um 
So no grays? We're not going to let the grays out? Yeah, I do. I let them grow out. I, I went through some transitional stuff um, that happened physically this year that was okay. pretty like life altering. And I was just like, oh, I need to feel like myself right now. Like what I felt like it was myself at that point was just like, I dyed my hair red for like since 2009 since I have okay. a license. And oh, so wow. I was just like, I miss my red hair. But yeah, I let it I let it come in and out and I love it. And so up until that point, I hadn't dyed my hair for like six months. Mm -hmm. So I'll let it and I don't care about what it looks like on the regrowth. It's like, it looks great. But, yeah. um, you know, there are other things like temporary things that you can do as well. Um, and no, your hair definitely shouldn't be the thing that um, makes or breaks you, you know, because then there's mm. also a struggle of like, people losing their hair and feeling like mm -hmm. they're not as beautiful or handsome because they don't have hair. And it's just like, but this space is sacred. So like you're yeah. now shaming yourself. And you know, a lot of us have been shamed for many years. Like I definitely True. was around this sacred space, my forehead or things that I was always told as a child. And so it's, I think that is being reflected in the work of like, it's okay to love yourself as you are. It's also okay to do these things if yeah. you're doing them for fun. And, you know, it's not something you that you absolutely require to have joy in your life, but it adds a little extra to it. And I think it's like checking Definitely. in why we do the things we do. For sure. And um, I think it's very important what you said. I think a lot of people do go to a, an insecure space when their hair starts to go. I know men for sure, but I think in my my opinion, I think it even affects women even more mm -hmm. when they start because, you know, women are usually associated with having hair. Right. Right. And so and I think one of the hardest parts is to, you know, know that your hair doesn't just define you mm -hmm. like you're a complete person. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that it, um, and I guess it goes back to like, I think you posted something earlier today we were talking about, you know, which is basically kind of just like loving thyself, mm -hmm. which I think is a a thing that a, a lot of people struggle with mm -hmm. is knowing how to love thyself. And mm -hmm. the, the thing that I just want to say is that people just need to tell them, people just need to know that you're here on this planet for a reason. Mm -hmm. You're not here by accident. Mm -hmm. People always, there's a, a thing that we should all think about is that the chances of you being here is phenomenal, probably mm. more than the stars in the sky, because your mother had to be um, ovulating mm. in the right time, which is a very short window. Mm. And then your dad has over like 3 million sperms and you had to be that one sperm to make it in that one time. First, your mom and dad had to meet and yeah. then they had to uh, have intercourse. I know it sounds kind of nasty. They had to get together at a right time and then you had to be that right sperm to make it. So it's just like... No one's here by accident. Right. We're all here for a purpose. And don't let the negativity of the world distract you from the greatness that you are, that we are, mm -hmm. and the things that we can accomplish. Mm -hmm. Don't let the distractions and the fear, mm -hmm. false evidence appearing real, mm -hmm. distract mm -hmm. you and destroy the beauty that relies in all of us. Okay? And so I just feel like I just have to say that. Yes. Um, and so... Regardless of what happens to us, no no one thing defines who we are. Mm -hmm. We are multifaceted creatures. Mm -hmm. We're multidimensional creatures. Mm -hmm. And um, not one thing on our body, in our mind, defines mm -hmm. who we are. We are very complex. Mm -hmm. Going back to our hair, not defining us. Absolutely. Right. And so going back to damaged hair, mm -hmm. right? What are some basic tips that you would tell people to help keep their hair healthy? Coming up with a good wash routine. So okay. before your hair begins to lose all of the water and the hydration, mm -hmm. um, that can be for curly or straight hair. Um, yeah, curly or straight hair. So that might be every four to five days. It might depend on your lifestyle. Say you work construction and you have long hair or you have outdoor work and you're constantly in the sun, mm -hmm. then you're going to be having that exposure on your scalp all day. It's going to be drying your hair out. So maybe wearing a hat at that time, mm. um, wearing one, depending on your hair texture, if you have curlier hair, then like a satin or silk lined um, hat or beanie or okay. something to help with the the friction that happens from the clothing. Okay. Um, you know, you can also get a satin or silk 
um, headrest to okay. help with the back that oh. tends to have a little bit different texture on most people. Um, but washing a good shampoo routine is, is wonderful because water alone is going to help, um, Water and hair have different pH, so your hair and your skin on your scalp are from a 4.5 to a, 4.5 to a 5.5 okay. on the pH scale, and water's at a 7. So it's going to open your hair up, and it's going to uh-huh. uh, work with the shampoo to lift the cuticle slightly to remove any debris, dead skin cells, um, any product buildup, and all of that is very important. If not, you know, different things can occur, um, build up and... Um, water uh hard hard water on your hair and yeah. create that type of stuff so when you work with the shampoo and the conditioner combined every you know again it depends on your lifestyle three to seven days mm-hmm. then um you're able to remove all of that stuff and then um from my understanding and my teaching is like working with the conditioner after to close the cuticle to help mm-hmm. retain moisture. Some people put oils. What I've been taught is like not to use oils because water and oil don't mix. And the best friend of um, hair is water. Okay. And so if you create a barrier, unless you're doing something that involves like a clarifying shampoo, which most people at home might be using it improperly. It's a very <laughs> hard shampoo and some people use it every week. Some people use it every day and it's very damaging to the hair. So you'll want to look for an everyday cleanser okay. um, and you'll want to shampoo your hair and conditioning it and condition it. Um, oh, you want to maintain your haircuts. Even if you're trying to grow your hair out, you want to get trims and that can be every uh, three to six months. Six okay. months is like, okay, your hair, you'll have to cut a little bit a year. You'll cut more because those split ends, uh, the cuticle layer starts to diminish. And so the ends start to like poke out and then they rough against themselves. And then that's when you get tangles and knots and things like that. And so they just okay. keep splitting up and up the hair shaft where that coloration, the discoloration, you can tell from the healthy okay. to the mm. unhealthy. So your hair might be down to your waist, but it might be dead from your waist up to your shoulders. Got you. Because you didn't get your hair cut and get it trimmed because it's just like a plant where you can cut it back a little bit and then it'll flourish grow and it'll grow in. Mm-hmm. Does it apply to all textures of hair? Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. If, um, you know, super, super good tip, by the way. I just wanted to say that. Oh, yes. Washing every day is a bad thing, right? Because you can drain the natural juices out of your scalp. The natural oil. Also using very hot water. Um, But again, it depends on your lifestyle. What if you work like in a morgue or something, right? Then you might, you might have to, you might have to work with the least amount of cleansing shampoo. Something that's not going to over dry your hair. So again, there's different shampoos on the scale. There's like a clarifying. Okay. There's regular rinse. There's like there's a regular wash, and like they have different. Um, what about just for like a typical average person? Yeah. So you want to go? Yeah. Don't wash your hair every day. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't wash it every day. And also, one thing you can get because a lot of our water has a lot of um, minerals and just things added in it, and the same buildup that happens on your shampoo, not your shampoo, on your shower. Um, like that line buildup and all that type of stuff happens on your skin and your hair. So if you can get a shower filter, then that's definitely going to help purify uh, that water, yeah. soften that water. Um, because that buildup happens on our hair with the product, with the dirt and all that stuff. And then that proper hydration isn't happening. So then when you go for your every three month haircut and you come see someone like myself, yeah. then we'll do the clarifying for you. And then you just do your regular maintenance and you can see the difference in that. Mm. Yeah, I definitely recommend getting filters on everything in your house, your sink, your shower, um, because, yeah, there's some pretty terrible things in the water, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I need to speak of myself. I need to do that myself. Yeah. Um, You know, Amanda, you you told us an origin story, but, you know, she... She must. She didn't talk about a lot of stuff, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bring something in that she's not really expecting right now. Okay. <laughs> so recently, you did a musical reading or performance, didn't you? I did. Uh huh. Uh-huh. You want to talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. I'd be delighted. Please talk you, to us about what, it. What do you want to know about it? I would like to know what made you decide to jump on the mic again. Yeah. And in public. Um. I think my friend, well, a, a number of things. I had invited my my homegirl Emily out with me to 
I'm going to do some plugs right now to yeah, Whiskey and Words, um, Lion Like Mind State Whiskey and Words. Um, my homegirl, Sandria, she had gifted me some tickets. Um, and so we went and my homegirl, Emily, had seen me a couple years back. They had an event and I would I would do some music like when I was 25, so over 10 years ago. Okay. And um, I had a lot of that like be quiet be seen and not heard growing up, right? And so okay. I had a lot of myself suppressed as a child and learned that's what this healing was about, right? What type um, of music are we talking about? Everything. I mean, okay. I don't know. I like I like I like it, but mostly around like soul, hip hop. Okay. Um okay. Mm-hmm. R and B, things like that. Mm-hmm. And so I went with her and Emily's like, would you do that? Like she's always whispering like, girl, you, you should be up on the stage doing yourself too. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm not ready because I, I also just had some, like, again, this year had been a really challenging time to implement these teachings, um, a time for growth. And, um, it was just, I feel like I'm just coming back to myself fully. So even in my work, I hadn't, I hadn't been offering some of my hair ceremonies and things because a part of my responsibility is, um, I only offer that work when I feel like I have the capa- uh, ca- capability and the capacity to mm-hmm. do so. So I feel like Smart. this was part of me owing it to myself. And when she told me, I was like, I could do that. I always say I can't, but then I'm like, I love my own music. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, my homegirl, Alma, so another plug. Um, Barrio Fuerza they just opened a space right here also in San Bernardino mm-hmm. and they were having their first open mic which had a lot of poets and I wanted to support Alma because she's one of the um, women that come to my crochet circle or our it's not mine our mm-hmm. crochet circle and um, and I wanted to just go support her because I know how important that is to have people come out when you do things and um, also because there's so much that we are that nobody knows anything about and we meet so many different people at different points in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so just reintroducing myself to myself and allowing others to experience that. Um, So I want to give a shout out to Adam at all, because he was the first person that told me, um, shout out to you, Adam, about you. And he, you know, he mentioned even on our, on our interview that, you know, it was transformative, uh, you know, dealing, working with you. Right. And stuff like that um, about hair and how you enlightened him. Right. And Adam's a rapper. Mm -hmm. Right. He's also a teacher, a professor, Mm -hmm. a poet. So I have this thing that I do on the pod and are on the empire. What we like to do here. And you're more than welcome to to participate or not. But if I kick a beat right now, (laughs) would you give us a little freestyle? (laughs) Um, There's no pressure. Uh, but it's it's all fun and we'd like to have fun here. Let's see if I feel the beat. Okay. <laughs> okay. The pressure's on we both got, sides. We got, she got she got to feel the beat. <laughs> I mean, okay, okay. you're an artist, right? You got to hey, you know, we going we going You ready? Yeah. Freestyle session. Okay. Commence. Let's get into it. Uh, <laughs> sit in. Okay. <laughs> I might sing. Mm, mm, sitting mm, on a Tuesday, mm, mm, sitting mm, on this podcast, mm, mm, talking to Antonio, mm, Antonio about mm, the future mm, and the past, mm, mm, talking about keep your crown right, on the empire you know we got flight, that's all I got, I hope that's all right, just had to come through and shine my little light. <laughs> Was that all right? <laughs> Sorry, I Thank was doing you. my best. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. We we love it. We love okay. it. We accept it all. All right. Thank you. I guess the beat was okay. It, I was, guess the, it was good. It, it was, was okay. Cool. It was yeah. all right. We got it. We got it. I was like, I was like, okay, well, we'll, we'll see here. You know, we're going we're gonna to rock the house. Uh, thank you for participating. Yes, yeah, we absolutely. like to have fun here. You yes. know what I mean? You know. Um, so one thing that I really like seeing on your page and stuff like that is uh, the before and after pictures mm-hmm. of the the women that I've been seeing, you know, what their what their hair is like before, and then this glow they have after mm-hmm. the pictures. Mm-hmm. Can you talk to us about that experience? How what happens and like, yeah, just talk to us about this before and after because I feel like there's something that happens in that moment. Yes, I I wasn't aware of it in the beginning. I had a client. Um, Joanna, she had came in to see me and I was doing her hair and I was taking her after photos. And she's like, you know, when I would look at your, your page, 
I like the hair looked great, but it was something about their eyes. And she was just like, their eyes just looked different and they looked so happy. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, I wondered if I was going to look like that in my after photos. And she's like, and I feel like that. And then I started crying like, oh my God. Like, mm-hmm. so just like really looking at it. And yeah, just, I feel like there's a confidence that people come. And I don't think it's like me. I think it's creator. Okay. And I had heard Tracy Ellis Ross. Working through you. Right. Okay. Say like people feel so comfortable around me is that, and she's like, I don't think it's me. It's, I think it's, I allow them to be themselves so much that they're, they're comfortable with themselves with somebody who allows okay. them to do that, okay. you know, to something like that. But yeah. But you're also putting the work in. Yes. Right. Uh, there's a famous, uh, power tools. Uh, there's a famous, <laughs> uh, Bible scripture. One of the ones that I like, which is, uh, Faith without actions is dead or faith without works is dead, right? And so God m- may be working through you, but without you putting the work in, mm-hmm. there's no result. Mm-hmm. Does, am I making sense? Yes, absolutely. Right? So God could be standing right next to us the whole time, but if we don't make a step forward, mm-hmm. then we're not making really the impact and the duty that we can be doing and are able to do on this planet. Mm-hmm. And so I just want to thank you. I'll just thank you mm-hmm. from me. I want to thank you for brightening people's days, Mm. putting light into their life, because I think it's easy in the world that we live in Mm -hmm. to be trapped in darkness, Mm -hmm. but light will always shine through. There's a a gentleman named Billy Carson, shout out to you, Billy Carson, owns Forbidden Knowledge, Mm -hmm. and he says, light will always be more powerful than darkness. Mm -hmm. He says... In this room, it's we can see because there's light, right? How hard would it be for darkness to to cover this room? It'd be very difficult with all the mm-hmm. lights on, right? Or vice versa. Let's say this room was dark. One little light would just blast right mm-hmm. through the darkness. Mm-hmm. So full circle, I just want to thank you because I've seen the results. The results are there mm-hmm. for putting light in their eyes. Mm. which is the gateway to the soul mm. to these people that you deal with. So I just want to thank you for thank that. Thank you. Right. And uh, I call it, I call it the glow because people are, people are glowing, mm-hmm. right. People are glowing. Right. And um, you mentioned it a couple of times earlier, which is, you know, you have a crochet workshop, mm-hmm. right. So I'm kind of curious, like how did this crochet workshop come mm-hmm. about? How did this hair bath mm-hmm. bathing come out workshop and, I think there's also a full moon coming along that you're working on. So how did these concepts come about and why and yeah. So for the crochet circles, um, it's actually my community. Um, I A lot of the people that come to the circles, I've cut their hair. And um, I have two comadres, close friends, mm-hmm. um, who I cut their hair at first. And then we just vibed and we found out that one crocheted very well Mm -hmm. and that we've all kind of been interested or we had crocheted a little bit. Okay. And so my friend Emily, um, Miss Butterfly or Popolo. Okay. um, Mariposa. uh Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. She is a beautiful teacher, a very patient and has the words and the ability to teach people how to crochet. Mm -hmm. Um, And my other friend, Yasmin, she was very interested and called to reconnecting. And so we talk about our, our ancestral connection, like, Um, Yasmin's grandmother, her nana would crochet and um, they have Mm. all these, these um, pieces that they've passed down from generations. And so same with Emily's and same with mine. And so through crochet, through crochet. Wow. And so like some, some things um, like I have my great grandmother's like doily, you know, those little circles like that. People crochet. They're just like little decorative circles people put on tables. Or, okay, okay. So I have okay. one of those on my altar. But I, a lot of, sometimes too, like it, it, it's really healing. There's thought a lot of things I don't know about my father's side because of trauma. And it can be very triggering. So even conversations or stories are not told. Okay. But um, I knew she had done these pieces and I knew my father had lived with her. And this so is your father's mother you're talking about? Father's grandmother. Father's grandmother. So it's your great grandma. Yes, okay. my great grandmother. Okay. And, you know, I grew up in a household where it's just like, you're there, but 
if you still want to talk to dad, like you got to kind of just like linger in the room and do what he's doing mm-hmm. for him to kind of acknowledge you, gotcha. you know, so ch- learning how to, how to be around those spaces. So I just was like all excited. Cause my friends, it was just three of us really when we mm-hmm. first started this circle and it had always been us three and we'd invite people and might be one or two or eight people, which are really excited. It's wow. a very intimate circle, which okay. we really love. Um, but we see the healing happening from other people and how crocheting has been connecting us to oh, wow. our family. And so when I saw that, I was like, this is kind of like, I want to bring this up, but I know I can't ask him this question. So mm-hmm. I'm just in there working on a scarf for my niece for Christmas. And he's watching his TV, whatever he's watching. And then he like kind of glances over at me. And I'm like, mm-hmm, in my own world, like, yeah. oh, how's your day? Because you can only really ask so many questions without being like yeah. a bother. And Got so um, he's like, oh, I remember my grandma used to do that. And then he's like, she used to, uh, she didn't even need a pattern. She just did art for hours. I could just watch her. She would just be doing all this stuff. And it like opened up conversation. It yeah. Okay. Like just wow. beautiful, intricate art. Wow. And um, so it's an expression like of, you know, your creativity. And um, yeah, uh, it brought about a lot of healing. I was able to have more conversation in that in that moment about crocheting and what it meant to him and I could see the excitement and the emotion um in his spirit arise so we just continue doing it because we really love getting together and we also honor the time for folks to be able to share a little bit of their day what they've been going through or not okay just to say hi I'm here and kind of want to learn to crochet or I'm a little interested and it's not just for crocheting some people come and they knit some people do beadwork some people just come okay. to talk because that's their space to to do so have like a little community to express themselves about mm-hmm. how they feel what's going on in their Absolutely. life while also perhaps like being creative simultaneously mm-hmm. and building like a little small community and so okay what about the same question basically but for like the the I think it's called like hair bath. Oh, the hair bath. Hair baths and, so the, hair, yeah. and the full moon that's coming up. Okay. Where do these concepts so come from? The hair baths, um, I was working with plant medicine and reconnecting with plant medicine. Okay. Can you elaborate what plant medicine is for? Plants and okay. they have medicine. <laughs> Gotcha. Plants and they have medicine. So they have like, medicine. The stoners are like, yeah, we know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm like that kind too. Gotcha. You know, all aloe vera. Uh, aloe vera. Yeah, uh-huh. all all kinds of plants. And okay. so I was reconnecting with plants um, through Hood Herbalism, which is a beautiful space. Um, okay. They're online now, but they used to have in person classes. Um, shout out to Hood Herbalism and gotcha. reconnecting me to plants. And so in my reconnection and we learned how to make different infusions, tea infusions, okay. um, how to, how different plants help your body. If you um, mm. have rheumatoid arthritis or if you have intestinal gas or okay. something or okay. any, anything or pain, what you can make in a solve from and all that. And so mm. I was really drawn to um, connecting with the plants and asking them what they had in store for, the sacred space, the head. And so it's, again, it's like, um, yes, there are benefits to the scalp and the hair, but they're also for the spirit. And so we work with the plants and ask them to help cleanse the space energetically. So if we're working with the lavender to call our own auric fields and to come back to ourselves and come back to that relaxing state, or if we feel like we are burnt out, then we might work with the aloe vera um, because it's used for burns, but also like, energetically when we feel burnt out um okay. rosemary for memory but also for grounding these are mm. you take the class and we'll go a little bit more in depth we covered a lot okay. but it's it's a beautiful way and so it's it, it's evolved everything that i do like how you were mentioning like you see it just grow it's more than i ever thought it would be it just evolves and i'm like oh this is this is what i'm supposed to be doing and this is what i'm supposed to be offering and just listening to that and going with that and mm-hmm. with the hair ceremony the full moon ceremonies um I have offered them in the past. And again, with my teachings, I'm learning more ways to work with the hair. Okay. Um, I never had any specific teachings on hair. It was just like what I was being called to do and the different education that I had alongside that, um, whether it be spiritually or around hair education itself. Okay. And so with the ceremonies, it is working with the cycles of the moon to release and a full moon is often worked with to um, release old energy. And so mm. in cutting it in there, it's also like where the planets are aligned. Now, I'm not an astrologer, yeah. um, but there are definitely favorable days to work with. 
And so okay. just honoring that and coming back to um, the first, because that's when I'll be coming out of, you know, um, my time for myself. So okay. I feel like there's a recharging happening in the summertime. The first um, of next month? Uh-huh, correct. Okay. Yeah, okay. which I've already been filled, and then I'll do the same thing for the 30th. Mm. Um, and so I've, I have had an elder recently um, suggest, like, doing different ceremonies with my clients. And so I'm just seeing where that's going to evolve, because not okay. all people operate on the same way. And so True. I'm looking like, oh, how do I offer these things? And, um, you know, allowing it to just reveal itself to me. Awesome. Well, when did the business start, actually? Um, I have been... Well, the space, the actual location in 2019. Okay. Um, but since I have been doing this work, uh, I've been licensed since 2009. That's what I thought. So I've been said. doing hair since 2009. And then in 2016 is when I started to offer hair ceremony. And okay. then from then I got a location in 2019. And we made it through the pandemic or through this point yeah. of, of life. And, um, and it's really just evolving more so now. Most of my clients tell was from Los Angeles okay. um, because of those spaces like um, hood herbalism or mujeres mm -hmm. de maiz, um, uh, large platforms that offer community healing and teachings. And because mm -hmm. I've had that and people who are specifically looking for what creator was asking me to offer, um, then it's just like I needed a space. And so a lot of my clients were coming from Los Angeles. And it's just now that I'm starting the last like three months, people are like, oh, I'm from Chino or I'm from Riverside uh -huh. or I'm from Rialto or I'm from uh, Hesperia, you know, local, or Ukaipa. Local. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, hi, neighbor. I get so yeah. excited because that's why I opened here. You know, it's like also to give back to the space. I didn't grow up in San Bernardino, but I knew people and had friends that lived like one block away from my shop. And um you know, like just all the things that people say about San Bernardino and it's like, Facts. there's so many things all over the world. And so Facts. is that going to prevent you from having Facts. something that feels good? And why aren't we deserving of these things? And we are deserving of these things. And so even in my space, um, my mural, I was cutting someone's hair and I was telling like the mom and the sister like, oh, like, yeah, and I want to put a mural here because like everybody's coming in the beginning stages. Like, thank mm -hmm. you so much for coming. This is just evolving. And when I said that, um, the mom was like, oh, my daughter, she does murals. And I was like, she does. And then they're like, yeah. And she's actually the assistant director of the Garcia Center. Yeah, give her Bianca. a shout out. Bianca, yeah. yes. Yeah. And she's done the beautiful mural at our shop. And that was her first paid gig. And I thought it was just so beautiful to offer it to somebody um, who was an up-and-coming artist from the area who was born and raised in the space mm -hmm. that I was... Um, now going to be offering services. So I also think about giving back to the community, not like just receiving, but what do you give? And that's what those circles also are about is yeah. offering more. Um, because when you have a physical, a physical location, um, it can, it can be in transform into so many different things that so many people need. Facts, mm -hmm. big facts. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you know, two things, I guess it must've been really difficult probably because the pandemic happened in, 2020, 2019, I forgot. But it must have been really difficult during those times, right? Mm -hmm. to, what made you say, okay, you know what? We're going to stick this out. We're going to push right through. What? what Spirit. Made okay. Um, I had been working at a warehouse job for 14 years. And I worked okay. like the 3 a.m. shift. And that I worked at APS. And that's a great job for people. I always honor whatever work people do. You know, it's a, it's a good workhouse to start out. Uh, a good warehouse to start out out at yeah. because they paid for I was had free benefits mm -hmm. I was union mm -hmm. uh, they paid for schooling you know or, and it was part time where I was allowed to work there and then when I'd get off I'd go straight to the school the beauty school yeah and um and also I had a lot of fear um and why I stayed there and it's really important to work on your spirit work so you know what is your path and not yeah. your parents or Somebody anyone else's, else's. Yeah. yeah yeah and so um with the pandemic and the shutdowns I was dealing with a lot of internal battles even prior to that I was gearing up I knew for two years I was ready to leave and I just couldn't because mm -hmm. I also found out like uh when I met my husband um 
that I was neurodivergent. And so like, what does that mean? Uh, so like I have ADHD, um, ADHD. And so sometimes like I might build walls of awful and I might stop myself from doing something because I become so overwhelmed with the thought of okay. the outcome that I just won't do it. Okay. So and so I like have anxiety to, basically deep anxiety that okay. is, um, yeah, just like, not I can't I can't move from there. Okay. So um it's like paralyzing. Absolutely. Gotcha. And so growing up, not knowing what that was, and also growing up where you didn't know if I could ask my parents to help me with something because, you know, I also come from where like my parents didn't graduate high school. My dad went back to get his GED, but also feeling like can they help me, which I'm sure they would have, and they would have figured out a way, but not wanting to be a challenge or a burden or um, this is, I should just be happy. This is a good enough job for me. I don't yeah. even have to think about insurance. This is a space where you just say what kind of insurance you want and you got it. Boom. $5 copay. Mm -hmm. Why would you even question that? Just be happy, be satisfied, mm -hmm. you know? And um, so I went to therapy for two years. Uh, I used their insurance. Nice. <laughs> and Boom. I went to therapy and I was like, I'm wanting to leave this job. Uh -huh. and, you know, and it started off with like one of my That's homeboys awesome. at, at, at UPS telling me like, um, you know, I, 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 my wife had a baby and I was stressed and I told him I was stressed and I went on work leave. And I was like, oh shit, like I should tell him that I'm stressed trying to figure it out. But yeah. I, I didn't really think I was that stressed at that time. And also learning that we have high tolerance of stress, which is really sad because you can be stressed the fuck out and not even know how to identify it. Yeah. And um, they say most people die between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Just because their thoughts are racing in the morning or why? Most people go to work at those times. Oh. Most people have to be at work at that time. Damn. Yeah, it's like, know, it's just it's crazy. Good. And so it's crazy. It's crazy. And so, yeah, during, you know, I was asking myself, what do I want? And this is what I feel like I should do. Like, why am I getting up every day for this person or for these people or for if I'm just a number? Like, yeah. I've been through so many different things and it's just like, do this or you're going to get fired. And you're not remembered the next day or seeing people who transition yeah. and pass away and they might be remembered one day and then. Life yeah. goes on for people, you know? Yes. And so um, when we had to shut down completely, mm. I saw what my life... Cause so up until that point, I was like, fuck this. I'm union. I'm going in one day only. And I was just playing the field the okay. way that was best. Like, you can't fire me. Write, write me up or... Don't say anything to me. Yeah. And so, like, my manager... <laughs> Call my bullshit. Call my bluff. Call my bluff. <laughs> and one of my managers like, look, Amanda, you've been saying it for two months. You're about to quit. And you still ain't quit. When are you quitting? And I'm just like, write me up if you have to write me up. You know, like, do what you got to do. I'm okay. not going to be mad at you. I'm not... I'm Do your job. And I'm doing mine. Because I started to pour all my energy into hair. I've never worked full time. I was working at a barbershop. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Empire's Barbershop in Moreno Valley. And they gave me an opportunity out there. And I worked for four and a half years. Okay. And I was doing that simultaneously while working at UPS. And, um, mm -hmm. and I was just like, oh, I can do this. I'm making more money. Like the only thing is I have to make enough to pay for insurance. You know, like, and just trying to figure out what that balance looks like. And not yeah. letting people pressure me. Because... You know, when you're growing and when you're doing stuff, people around you who wish they can do those things might try to make you feel a type of way about doing those things. And yeah. I remember this one lady, I Basically just like- Basically probably put doubt inside yeah, you. Yeah. She's like, why don't you just quit now? Why don't you just quit today? And I remember a friend be like, don't let those people make you feel bad. You quit when you're ready. Like if it's just because they're going to be there for another 20 years, you know, and again, that's an honorable position for these people. That's not me downplaying them yeah. because- I did a lot of things because of that place. You know, I was yeah. able to go to school full time. I was able, you know, to yeah. do that and have a backup and have insurance for all those years, you know. That's their storyline. Your storyline is different. Yep. People try so, to put their their doubts and their fears on other people all the time. Yep. So then I just was like, okay, I'm about to leave. And so one day I just was just like, they did the shutdowns and I had to close my shop because obviously nobody knew what was happening and what was mm, going on. Yeah. And I was only at UPS full time. And... I could handle the warehouse job Monday through Friday if I, I liked, you know, I had seniority. So I was just like, yeah, are you cutting anybody? 
like I'll go home. I'll uh, go home. I'll go home. Got you. I'll go home. Half day. Some people didn't like that. Some people loved that I was that employee that I'd be able to be there for just one hour. I was like, cool. I don't need to pay here. I can go get pay over here. But I still got my benefits. That's all I cared about mm. because I, my parents also worked in LA, and I felt very guilty that my parents also were woke up and started work at like three in the morning. Okay. And so a lot of me was like, I feel bad. I live with them. Like, you know, they didn't make me pay rent. They just be like, you know, if we need the help, we'll ask you, but we're not asking you. And so, um, I would just feel guilty about them having to do that. So I had to do a lot like, this is your life. That's their life. Even if you weren't born, that's their life. You know, like having yeah. to like yeah. talk myself, you know, through it. And so when I was with the shutdowns, I was like, wow, this is what life would be like every day. And it was, it was like Christmas every day. Oh, really? And so that oh, wow. was just like too much. And they had just got a new automated system. So I was really, I, when I, when I went on stress leave, I really found out like, I'm really stressed when I like also being neurodivergent, some of those like loud sounds, the belts constantly going off. Okay. Um, I would always have to have earphones, but if not, like it just brings that anxiety Mm -hmm. and just like can be very triggering or people just yelling all the time and the way people yell at you, like I'd be like, (sighs) Because everything's so loud. Yeah. Well, no, just because people don't have people skills and they're in a position to not have skills and not know how to ask people what they need in a Mm. manner that can be received in a good way. Hey, Amanda! Oh, my God. So I was like, (laughs) I need you to check the way you're talking to me in a minute, okay? And then I can do what you need me to do. And that's Mm. very challenging because I don't like being told what to do Uh if it's not logical and in a way that sounds pleasing okay, so okay. like talk to me nice <laughs> and i'll go do what you need me to do talk to me nice <laughs> so, baby talk to me so, nice yeah so in that state i saw like okay what are the things i can do is this what i want i saw that yeah those boxes coming down that were endless boxes and that's also something that happens when mm. i was doing this research about how to help people our community has the highest rates of stress anxiety hypertension heart attacks mm-hmm. gro- strokes and it's because our workload is increasing, but our pay is staying the same. Yeah. So because the pandemic ha- yeah. happened and we were working overtime in a warehouse, they didn't give us hazard pay or pay raise for those hours and all that stuff. And working in a stressful, nobody knows what's happening environment. They Facts. didn't do any of that. But you want me to come to work each day and work my ass off. So I saw like, that's n- that's not it for me. And I just was like, this is it. Fuck it. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. And I can't take it anymore. Cause I was like, I didn't realize that until I knew how to identify it where mm-hmm. I'd go in and I'd be sh- like shaking or like, you know, like I love weed. That was my, like, <laughs> you know, just to be honest, like that was my thing. But then also it was like, where did it numb me from that feeling of, uh, you know, I can't be here. I can't be here. Cause yeah. in the beginning I used to get sick going there every day oh wow but that's why it was I smoked because my t- my tummy wouldn't be able to take it uh-huh. getting up at those hours and just all the stuff but i didn't know how to identify that and so when i identified and saw like okay what are my weaknesses okay i i have to i started um exposure therapy which is okay. just basically ex- if you're afraid of roaches look at a roach you know and okay like, <laughs> okay well. it's like different things like Shit. that you're afraid of so for me like it might have been now. No, it, it, it might have been like filling out a simple form it sounds so simple to somebody and that's why i really love my story too is because yeah. i just appreciate damn you've really been through some challenging times and look at you if you ask me how i opened that shop i have all the right paperwork but i couldn't walk you through it i just knew yeah. i was tackling the task before me each step one yeah. after the other just take a deep breath this is what they need a business license okay where no do problem. i need to go figure it out you know and so yeah. that's really what all my life's been about up until this point point. and so when i was there i just gave my two weeks and yeah i haven't looked back nice. and it's been a lot of different things happening along the way there are challenges it's not you know i didn't i got cut off from insurance it was cool didn't have to do that and then got back on and got back off and you know had before i had the building owner that i have now i had like a slumlord for okay. an owner so rain <laughs> coming through and different uh, things slumlord. you know just yeah awesome. take rent on rent on time every month things aren't getting situated yeah so um scandalous yeah there's just a lot of things and but it's all worth it like i love it i wouldn't change it for the world like i'm learning so much about myself i'm learning what i'm capable of um what is still ahead of me to discover so So right when you 
quit UPS, you opened up the shop. I had the shop and I'd only see like one or two people there because I was still working at the barbershop because uh, I'm a very loyal person. I wasn't okay. ready to leave. Okay. I wasn't ready to leave. And I was, I was so grateful for that opportunity to work in the barbershop that I felt very guilty too. Okay. Like, um, and I, and I spoke to the owner and I spoke to him like, I'm thinking about leaving. I'm thinking about opening my shop. Yeah. And he taught me a lot. He taught me negotiate. You know, that's what's beautiful. And now shout out to Ray from Empires because some people are haters and will be like, don't take, you can't take your clients or make you sign. I learned so much about if I did have anybody work in my business, mm-hmm. I would do it like how he did because it was just very personable, yeah, very old school, very, this is like the house type deal. And okay. it just brought a lot of love. And he just was like, negotiate with those people. Tell them for the first six months, can you pay this amount? You know, while you set your business up, I would have been paying them what they asked me if he wouldn't have told me that. And that helped, you know, yeah. like, so just things like that. So I, as I started to um, work at the barbershop and my shop. Okay. And then eventually, cause I, so I saw that, you know, different locations had different medicine. So at the barbershop, you know, uh, I can't be like, shh. Stop throwing those dominoes down. Like, okay. I'm doing a meditation over here. Like, what you. the hell? Like, this is, there are older folks. There are people who came to play dominoes Got so you. loudly. That was their home. They're that, like, okay. That, that, that brought that elder youthfulness. That was their crochet. That brought him, yes, brought him joy. Mm-hmm. And that is a, a medicine as well. Mm-hmm. So recognizing that neither are wrong. They're both beautiful offerings to the community. Because we did so much community work there. And so... um I just was like, okay, now I'm doing more of the ceremonies. So I was doing much more ceremonies and um, it needed that, it needed that space. And um, people were needing that space to cry. People were needing that space to talk, talk to somebody and not feel like I have so much shit going on. And there are all these people. I don't know if I can be that vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. And and, and, and in the barbershop, right? Especially for some men. Facts. Yeah, I haven't had. I think I've had one person cry or two people. I had somebody cry in the barbershop over there. Um, you know, just that's what it's about. And this walk is like that's medicine and let it out. So big yeah. facts, mm-hmm. big facts. You know, I also noticed that. You know, you're on the Empire right now, but you have your own little podcast. Not little, but you have yourself a podcast as well, where you deal mm-hmm. talking with other people who deal with hair and mess with hair. How did that come about and why did you want to do that? Um, I wanted to connect. I wanted to connect with people that I was interested in knowing more about what they offered. I wanted to not only know about them, but get to know them. I wanted to be friends with people who were doing something similar to what I was doing in their own way and just, yeah, shine light on those people. So you wanted to shine light on other people that are in the kind of the same industry that you do? Yes. And um, I had heard some of my guests on podcasts or I've been a part of their events. And so I just wanted, yeah, to connect and to share a little bit about that. But um, some things kind of happened with it and my audio person was no longer available. And so I was like, I don't know where to go from here. So I just okay. let it fall off. Um Okay. What are some of the things that you learned from other people who deal with hair? Um, I learned about their personal journey and why it was so important to them. Um, and I learned about... Um, hmm, I learned about like the business also okay. in some interviews. It's very important. Yeah, like uh, the business of like the shop and being around other barbers. I learned, you know, like, oh, I didn't experience that, but that's that makes sense and that's interesting. Or Can you give you us know, an example? Um, just like a shark mentality. Uh, okay. I got to get this client. And the ruthlessness sometimes that people will do, even in business with other people, right? Because it's about self for some people. And okay. So... Um, or hazing that happens in the shop or what's hazing like just making fun or okay youngster or whatever like okay just the dozens to, yeah just like all the things that make people like it's all good too no knowing that it's all good too yeah um because some of it is like a test in how you receive things and not taking things so personally as well uh-huh. um 
but yeah, about energy or, or their beautiful offerings. You know, I've worked with different people who worked at salons that were specifically, um, yeah, for folks that have neurodivergencies or kids that have like autism or, mm. or things like that. I've talked with people who do um, nonprofit work for displaced um, LGBTQ community okay, um, and how that related to their own personal journey. Um, yeah, just like. A couple of people. I interviewed my old cosmetology teacher. Interesting. And yeah, that was cool. And yeah, just different people just wanting, just having the desire to to have community and to talk a little bit. Awesome. You know, I, I think it's cool that you mentioned the, I think it was autism, but I, I'm not sure, but I found this guy, I came across him on accident. I'm not sure if he deals with autistic kids specifically, but I know he deals with special needs kids mm-hmm. and he, his barbershop specifically for special needs kids or just people in general Mm -hmm. and i watched him just uh like some clips of him uh cutting hair and it's just like wow like you have to be a special a special heart type of person to want to do that specifically like hey i just want to specifically cut hair for special needs kids because it's not easy you have to be very patient Mm -hmm. you have to be very understanding and um, I just I just watched him and I was just amazed. I was like, wow, he's got like tricks just to get like, probably takes him three minutes just to get one zip. Yeah. And then he has to like get their attention again a certain way. Good job. Good job. Let's do this. Let's do this. One more time. One more time. Zoop. And it's just like, wow, like mm-hmm. just to get one. Mm-hmm. And like, I just thought it was amazing. Um and you know you were talking about working with these other beauticians, people who beautify people. I can I consider you guys beautifying. Well, I guess beauticians, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I guess we can break down the word as someone who beautifies other people, right? And so I think you guys have a wonderful work, which you guys are just going back to the glow, mm-hmm. beautifying people, making people have their their make them look their best selves um, externally, which can also affect internally. Um, Amanda Jade is Jade, right? Not Jane, right? Uh-huh, Jade. Uh-huh. <laughs> that would be a more uh, country. Amanda Jane? Uh-huh, yeah. Amanda Jane, yeah. Mary Jane, Louise. Anyway, uh, what current projects are you currently working on? Um, as far as hair or as far as... You can I'm, let us know everything. It can be uh, music too. It can be, you know, building yeah, a house, whatever you yeah, whatever um, you want us to know about you. Yeah, building with my family, with my husband and getting, you know, we both have businesses um with my salon and his commercial cleaning business so okay. like shout out to booker cleaning services um <laughs> um just building within ourselves and i think my biggest project is myself okay just not always having to work or fix anything but just learning what it is to be present um physically i'm working on a, a blanket for m- myself and my okay. husband like our crush shine this huge Got blanket you. and what color is it it's multicolored. Okay. It has like this beautiful like teal, but like a light teal, and it has like orange and burnt orange and black and browns okay. and like a red brown and a deep green. Like, yeah, they're just like really warm feeling. I don't okay. know. It, okay. It's giving me like seventies vibes. Like, okay. Yeah. So I'm almost finished with that. I have like three more thick rows of colors to go. Um, it's gonna bring your weed days back when you finish it. <laughs> It's, it's going to be great for the winter time. Uh-huh. Um, with the salon space, just continue to um, work on my skills endlessly, okay. my education, um, my tools. Um, I, I kind of want to tap in creatively to color. I get so many people who ask me about hair color. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a lot there's a lot of layers to that and there's a lot of work a lot of science behind it okay. a lot of chemistry okay. and so i'm like uh i like creative color i like like certain things so i might just do like model work where i just you know just explore that okay uh, i don't know again education that comes with education um and then i think also like sharing a little bit more i think i share a lot about like my own journey and like this medicine on my hair page but also getting a little bit more comfortable with being like on the other side of the camera and sharing people like how i apply product or like um how i'm styling the hair or you know just kind of giving a walkthrough on those things um 
And then as far as music, yeah, I think musically, um, I haven't written anything in a long mm-hmm. time. Like the song that I shared at the open mic, yeah, like that I wrote about like just being alive, like you were saying. And I think my biggest project too is just like sharing, like I, I basically like just reiterating what you say. I always tell people, have you seen that movie? Soul, the Disney movie soul. Have uh-huh. you seen that? I have. Okay, you know, it's like, I always say, like, you had to get an Earth Pass to get here. Like, Uh you were here, you're Mm -hmm. here. And so um, I think just living authentically and just, like, trusting that, that allows other people just to see themselves and the opportunity they can grant themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, That's it. And just see, we do have some different events at the shop. I have new neighbors, so we're trying to come up with a good you know, time because we used to offer meditation, mm-hmm. um, you know, definitely like some yoga, some, we've been wanting to do some, uh, like smoking pains or sipping pains okay. or different things okay. at the shop. We just had Inland 69 about two weeks ago, which was like an erotica, um, art and panel oh, wow. that we had. Uh, Can you explain what that, can you? Yeah, there yeah. was different artists. Uh, so sh- again, shout out, shout out to Sandria okay. Writes. She's uh, releasing, I believe it's her fourth book, okay. and she writes um, erotic sci-fi. Okay. And um, big women market. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, all over, all everybody market. But yes, there was um, different. There was a, a dancer, a burlesque dancer. There oh, was wow. a poet. There was um, a sip and paint. So one of uh, Sandra was reading from her book and she was also the model for the paint. Okay. And then um, the panel of talking about erotica and I do some photography. Um, but yeah, I feel like a baby on the panel. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know, everybody was definitely outward expressive of that, which was beautiful to see because it is like a taboo. And so just being comfortable with sharing that, it, it was beautiful. It was a very intimate space. And okay. um such a great turnout and such a great vibe and yeah it, it just more things like that just connecting nice so on the panel they talk about like their sexual desires sexual experiences no, uh or? they talked about like their work and how um healing it is okay to be expressive to talk about anything you know like where would they like to see erotico moving um, in the next couple of years, okay. uh, how people view you because you talk about those things or because you are expressive of those things. And some people are like, that doesn't mean you're a thought or all those other things. It's a lot of things that people choose to, that they, they do participate, but are very shameful about the things that participate and doesn't have to be anything like super out there, you know, for it to be erotic, it could be the illusion of something, you know, okay. and, like a fantasy or something. Right. Or oh, okay. just like, um, so like my photography it somebody might have like lingerie on but they're not they're not showing like all these things it might just be like a placement of a hand on the shoulder or okay. you know just like a crease of a thigh or something okay. that's just like oh that's kind of nice what is that but people do that like i said in their homes but like the minute that somebody might choose to be like this is what i do as my art now there's all these misconceptions around it mm. so it was bringing light to that okay and the beauty of it and the expression of it it was really beautiful Erotica, well, because, you know, I guess it's such a vast, yeah, we're getting into erotica now, folks. <laughs> uh, such a vast topic, right? Because it, it can be from, I guess, from amateur to really extreme, right? And I heard something recently, which kind of makes a lot of sense. Like, the internet wouldn't be what it is today or taken off if it wasn't for, like, porn. The VHS industry wouldn't have taken off if it wasn't for... Mm-hmm. porn mm-hmm. right and so it's it's interesting that because sex is a part of our life right it's right. how we live so it's interesting that um sex how sex has driven forward technology to become more public mm. or the watching of sex i guess mm-hmm. um which i thought was interesting i thought was interesting um you didn't mention your, your full moon that's coming up soon, mm-hmm. right? That's one of your current projects, right? It's the full yes. moon ceremony, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, there was something that I wanted to ask you, and I totally am slipping my thought process, and it'll come probably when I can't think anymore about it, but it may not be meant to be. So let's say, oh, man, I wish I would have remembered. Oh, well, we'll let it go. So let's say, Amanda, Jade, at that, a hundred years pass by, two hundred and fifty years pass by. 
What would you like your empire to look like? Whether mm. that's in business, spiritual healing, family, community, or all the above. What would you like your empire to have looked like? I think it'd be like what I would like it to feel like. And like, as I work on each person, it goes through generationally. So I feel like it will be something that will be passed on to many different households and many different lineages um, long, yeah, after I'm gone. And even if it doesn't have my name attached to it, right, it'll be like just something beautiful, a healing, a beautiful experience, a beautiful closeness, a beautiful um, joy to to wash your children's hair, okay. to pray on them, you know. So just a feeling that, is endless and how many people it can reach. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I talked to my friend about the word pray, mm -hmm. right? Because there's, the English language is a very tricky language, mm -hmm. right? Because you can either pray with an A or you can pray with an E, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So you have to be careful when someone says, I pray for you. Mm -hmm. Which pray do you mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then they say like, you know, you do your talking you know, like maybe it's not the word prayer because some people like I had an elder who's like, we didn't use the word prayer. Mm -hmm. We just our grandma say, go out there, do your talking, mm -hmm. talk to spirit. To the talk most to, high. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you do have to be mindful, you know, and yeah. I, I have a friend that'd be like, yeah, like don't pray without without my consent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it, you know, but obviously we knew what you meant about praying. Yes. <laughs> um, it just, it just, it just reminded me. It just see what I had to say. Yeah, yeah. No, it just reminded me of that word, you know, because English is very interesting because like, here's a, uh, here's a couple of, couple of things I want to put for you, right? So, um, so in school they used to say, I want you to blank your name. What's, what's the blank? If you're, if it's talking about writing, I want you to blank your name. Capital, capitalize your name or, oh no. Start, starts with the letter S. I want you to blank your name. I don't know. I want you to spell your name. Oh yeah. Okay. Right. Um, so when we were talking about magics, we want you to cast. A spell. Uh-huh. Well, yes. Yeah, so our names are also that. That's why it's mindful of like knowing yourself or know thyself and um that can get really deep into like numerology and what your name means and what your essence is and my mm -hmm. name is amanda which is can be known as love or that is receiving of love or giving of love um or uh, a gift from god and so there's different things just like the word nice right people say yeah. don't use nice because nice really means fool if you look at the etymology mm -hmm. of a word Boom. and and you know my husband that we always talk about those type of things like well what does that really mean and so we're like i don't even know what that we use it in our in our daily life but what is the definition of it you yeah. know and so we are constantly or people are like don't say i'm striving for this because strive is to struggle so i'm striving to get to where no nah, i don't want to struggle where i go Mm -hmm. You know, like, and the other day I was saying something in the circle, like, you know, using the word and they're like, the Bible, like the word, I'm like, the words that come out of your mouth, they have a vibrational frequency, Fact. you know, so we misuse words all the time, yeah. all the time. Words yeah. are powerful. Yes, they are. You know, one last thing that I wanted to say, going back to words, which is, um, <laughs> so people would say, yeah, um, you blank a spell in order to, uh, if I'm going to throw something on the floor, I'm going to blank a spell. I'm going to cast it. Yeah. So some people call this, uh, that we're doing, some people would call this a pod. Cast. Mm -hmm. uh, on TV, they do a broad. Cast. When you're on stage, there's usually a... Cast. Mm -hmm. um, so it's... Uh, English is a very interesting language. American English, to be precise, especially, but yeah, English. I think it's great that, you know... <laughs> When given a platform, what are you casting? Knowledge? Yeah. Are you casting spells that are going to affect people in a, in a not so good way? And that comes down to like music and, you know, platforms. Yeah. And yeah. So thank you for your work and uh, this time and being able to share a little bit about uh, what I consider to be medicine. Um, 
and bringing light to it for our community. I really appreciate that. Hey, thank you for being here. Thank you for being on. Thank you for sharing. And, you know, I don't believe anything is good or evil. Mm -hmm. I just think uh, it depends on whose hand is it in. Mm -hmm. So a sword is no longer, a sword is not good or evil. It just depends on whose hand is it in. Mm -hmm. Meaning what's your intent with the Mm -hmm. sword? Mm -hmm. Do you want to protect a family or do you want to raid and pillage a family? Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Going back to, you know, so uh, we want to thank Miss Amanda Jade for being on, for sharing with us. Uh, I think uh, we had a good time today. You know, we learned, you know, some healing, some uh, magic plants, how the story started, how she scammed UPS. <laughs> um, so many bit. great things. And I want to thank her for being on. Um, Amanda Jade, can you please tell everybody how they can find you, link with you, support you, everything. Can you just let them know how they can do all those things? Yes, definitely. You can find uh, us at our website or me at keepyourcrownright.com. Um, also, keep your crown right on Instagram. Um, come to a circle if you feel called. They're donation based. Nobody turned away for lack of funds. Uh, we just ask that you RSVP and. Um, Yeah, if you have any resources, any information on any grants or anything like that, we'd love those to help build our space up more. And you can email me at keepyourcrownright at gmail.com. Awesome. And I'll have all the links and information in the description. And uh, like I said, great stuff that we had today. Uh, My name is Antonio Lee Miles. Don't forget to like the video, share, subscribe. We're trying to build this up. Um, if you want to support, you know, we have a PayPal that's in the description, dot me, the Empire Podcast, or Cash App, dollar sign, T-H-E-E, Empire Podcast. And uh, yeah, other than that, we'll catch you guys in the next one. All right? Peace. Peace. Quick thing, can you put the mic on that on the other leg? Yes. Does that work? Does that feel comfortable that way? Uh, a little bit. Why oh, it's cutting off my face? Uh, that's what I'm wondering. Okay. I can hold, is it okay if I hold it like this so they I can think still so. see? Me? I think so. Okay. I think that might work. Okay. It might work both ways, but I okay. guess I'll, I'll find out when I All look. Right. But either way, we'll make it work. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. <laughs> Not too bad, huh? No, it was good. It was a good exchange, I think. Yeah, we had fun. Yes. I'm gonna stretch a little. Yeah, did the nerves the nerves go away? No, yeah, they did.